Um, that does not look finished. Welcome back to the channel guys. Just last week we finally finished this build and took it out for its first test drive completely finished and now it's a part again. What the world is going on? Well, if you stuck around to the end of that video, you would have heard me mention that I wasn't 100% satisfied with the way the back end was lifting up. You could kind of see it in that running footage when I'd lift the back end up. It didn't seem to lift up as strong as the front or as high as the front. So I decided to do a little digging to see what could be causing it to not lift as high. I first thought it could be something to do with the endpoints in the servo, but I went ahead and played around with that a bit off camera and even if I adjust the end point it doesn't lift the rear end of the truck any higher something's going on with the rear end my next suspicion was actually the lower links I know after some issues that I had with the front links that me painting these rod ends was not a great idea when I put the pivot balls back in them there was a lot of binding it was way too tight not moving freely so I thought maybe the same thing happened here but you can see here this is moving more than free enough if it can drop under its own weight that's moving more than free enough but what you can't see at this angle is something i did notice and what i believe is our real problem see it now this is my upper cross member for the rear and sort of similar as the axle and with nothing really holding this up this should be flopping down just like the axle gravity should be taking control in this situation and it's not which means we have some friction some binding somewhere you may notice i actually have some notches grinded into my upper cross member here and that's because I realized that one of the first things that was limiting me was the shocks actually running into this cross member. We filed that down with the drum a little bit. But now we have to figure out why this isn't pivoting like it should. So let's go ahead and get it out of the truck and we can see what's going on. So I'm not really sure how well I'll be able to show you this on camera, but it does look like I'm having the same issue just with the pivot balls up here now. They're extremely tight. I can't really rotate them that well. I was thinking based on the fact that the movement that this part does is basically linear up and down like this. The pivot should just be around the screw and the pivot ball shouldn't matter that much, but Thinking about it a bit, the screw passes through the pivot ball and there's a nut on the back side that presses up against this pivot ball, basically locking it in our mounts. So the pivot ball does need to rotate for our rear end to move up and down freely. Now the way I've been solving this problem is popping the pivot balls out, doing some sanding and cleaning, getting as much paint as I can out from the rod ends as possible, and then slapping the pivot balls back in and hoping for the best. We're gonna try that first. If not, we may have to look into some other solutions. As you saw, that freed up the pivot balls a good bit, but there was still some binding, still something holding that upper cross member from moving freely like it needs to. There was something else I noticed though. These are the two mounting points that I 3D printed for this upper cross member. They're basically just spacers, but if you notice, this one has a little crack in it and the center hole on this one isn't in the center. It looked like the screws holding this in place weren't in line with each other, which was causing some binding, and I thought maybe that could be my issue. So I replaced them with just some little spacers I had and some washers just to get an idea. Realized technically we don't need two screws holding this in place. We really just need one, it's just a spacer and now you can see this moves up and down really nicely but now we can reinstall the shocks and see if this will work better and now with the body so on first glance that did look pretty good it looked like it raised it up pretty high and pretty strong but if we also lift up the front, you can see the front's riding higher than the back now. And 
just a little bit of movement from my hand actually lifts the back up to where it needs to be. I believe I know what the issue is here. Let's explain this a bit. If you followed along with the build, basically from when I was building the chassis, you know I went through and looked at a couple of different options for servos to get to where I'm at now. And in the rear, we're now running this dual axis 35 kilogram servo. When I first mocked the body up on the chassis and tried to lift it up, I knew I needed something strong. This was the strongest servo that I could find in this dual axis configuration so i could run only one servo in the rear i do believe the 35 kilograms of torque should be enough to lift up the back of this body no issues but are we getting the full 35 kilograms out of this servo well if you've been around rc a while and are familiar with servos you know that the torque rating of these servos is affected by the voltage that's provided to them most receivers that our servo plugs into will give your servo five to six volts and if we go and look at the specifications for this servo we can see at five to six volts we're only getting 29 to 32 kilograms of torque out of this servo. I have gone in with a meter and checked to see exactly how much voltage is coming out of this receiver. And it's only at about five and a half, not quite five and a half volts. So I figure we're probably getting about 30 kilograms of torque out of this servo. If we can bump up the voltage to 7.4 volts, we can get that whole 35 kilograms of torque which is where that part comes in we need a bec a bec will allow us to take direct battery voltage in this case an 11.1 volt 3 cell lipo and output however many volts we want directly to the servo the servo will still get signal from the receiver but it'll get power directly from the battery I'll be able to set the BEC to 7.4 volts so we don't overload this servo and it should give us enough power so it can lift and stay up not sag back down. That'll be in in a couple of days unfortunately it'll be in after this video gets released so you won't get to see that working until we hit the car show. I know I've been talking about it a lot but it's only about two weeks away. Should be pretty fun to get out there. It's pretty typical of a build to be last minute you know. All I can really do now is hope that it'll work out hopefully i'll be able to drive it more than it's just a beauty queen sitting out front park i hate to keep you in suspense but until i get that bec in that'll be it to wrap up this build i know it's a quicker video this week but i wanted to cover all the little bitty issues and little bitty kinks i'm working out of this truck as we get ready to head out to that car show Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video or if you've enjoyed the build in general. Again, make sure to subscribe because you won't want to miss the video when we take this thing out to the car show for the first time. And as always, thanks again for watching. Peace.